I really wish I could say most of my stuff fits inside a backpack, but kayaking equipment and camera gear adds up quick. Still, I'm pretty motivated to drag it around with me, and I'm always on the road, going from place to place, chasing rivers. I've seen a lot of beautiful places, but there's just something about the Ertz Valley that connects with me, and every time I come back, it feels like I've come home. This edit is supported by my friends at Source to Sea. For more information on kayak guiding throughout Europe or to purchase some new kayaking equipment, please check out the links to their website in the video description. The Ertz River is fed by a dying glacier at the top of the valley. In the warm summer months, the glacier melts every day and the river breathes as it rises and falls with the daily fluctuations in temperature. The rapids come alive a few hours after the heat of the day, when the runner from the glacier has made its way down the valley and filled the river. I have spent so much time on these rapids, learning how they work and how to work with them. No matter how much I think I know and how confident I feel, this river is always teaching me lessons and keeping me humble. The class 5 rapids in this valley are powerful and consequential, which is what I think makes them feel so rewarding. The rapids in Utztal are made up of rocks, delicately balanced on top of each other, placed there by Mother Nature. They are delicate structures that can move around, but in all the years I've been kayaking in Utztal, not much has changed. But a hundred year flood is about to change everything forever. There is nothing more beautiful nor more destructive than flowing water. At the peak of a flood, roads and trees were washed away in seconds. I can't even begin to imagine what the river is going to look like when the flood water recedes and we're allowed back into the valley. Like it's completely different. Completely. Literally every single book change. Every single one. Eesh. It feels very sad to see my favourite rapids lost, mangled or completely transformed. I found myself wishing I had more time to say goodbye to these old friends.
That was just a small taste of the new Ertz River. But there's over 60 kilometers of the Ertz, along with the Vent River that helps feed it. I have a lot of new rapids to go and explore. The first section I'm gonna check out is mine and my friend Adrian's favorite. It's fast, chaotic, and chock full of moves where you have to react quickly. It took us a while to work our way down on the first lap after the floods. So like a pretty big, exploding piece of water down there so we decided to go check it out and uh, yeah probably not our worst call this thing goes on rocks pretty hard which honestly most of the run is doing by this point but I'm sure we'll find a, a line to wiggle ourselves around that and continue progress further downstream but we soon had the lines dialed in and it felt like old times out there this is the new middle earths Happily, these diggers are just clearing some debris from the crazy floods we had last week and uh, they're not actually doing any harm to the river, I don't think. And if I did think they were doing some harm to the river, you'd find me strapped to one of these things, complaining a lot and uh, probably naked, naked for, uh, for emphasis. Thankfully, probably won't come to naked protests at building sites because the Free Rivers Fund is actively involved in protecting this valley, but they need your help. Please sign the petition to stop the expansion plan that would destroy the rivers in this valley and follow the Free Rivers Fund to stay up to date with how you can help protect rivers throughout the world. Whether you're an individual or a brand, they have ways for you to support the fight for free-flowing rivers. For example, Palm Equipment donates 1% of its profit from Whitewater PFD sales to the Free Rivers Fund, where the money is then distributed to support various activism projects and movements. To some, the Vela Brucker is just the Ertz Trophy racecourse. To me, 
it was always about the entire stretch of river. And today, I'm going to drop into the rapids above the race course for the first time with two Ertz Trophy champions, Matthias Weger and Laura Hofberger. So move right, look for the rock, tuck in behind it. Only thing to know about is on the island, there's some trees stuck there, but they're not in play. change panicked ran up and the dam was starting to release more water pretty sketchy Nicely. One, the entry. Two, how tight it is to co try and come up it. I think at the moment you'll just smash through it, plug and sort of fall off the back of it. Which very nice. And then I don't think you'll see it in the video. There's a rock ledge that extends out here. Super sharp and gnarly. Maybe undercut. And uh, yeah, I don't know. 
my other line that I want to do is on that side of the river, squiggling in, going off the old booth and then down through this last part, but still a bit too much water for me to feel good about making this turn. Oh, another week or so, I think I'll be able to hit that line and it will be great. Really curious as I get more laps and feel more comfortable out here with the new changes. If it comes back up again with some rains, maybe I'll commit to hitting this thing. I would love to fly off that, but I'm not willing to be hurt and to not kayak by trying to fly off it, but not flying off it. The High Lacroix is actually a tributary that feeds the Oats River, and it has a reputation. It's a tight, walled-in gorge, and if you have a problem in there, it often turns into a bit of a saga to get out. But if you can keep your stuff together, it's one of the best sections of river in the valley. When we first scouted this piece of river, it had way too much water going through the gorge for us to drop in. But as the summer temperatures begin to dip and the melt from the glacier lessens, we found ourselves with ideal flows to go and open the gorge back up. It was a slow process on the first lap, with myself and a tight crew taking turns to scout the next horizon line. There have been avalanches and portages here in the past, so we weren't taking any chances and we scouted a lot. But what we found is that the flood has actually cleaned up this section of river and made it better than it was before. It's been a joy to show people down this section of river again. The day that I wanted to drop into the Kutran section, it rained hard and the river levels were way too high to drop in. But that meant that the upper and lower Uts, Kuffles and the lower vent were at my all time favourite flows. They were absolutely frothing.
<laughs> Might not be everyone's dream, but this is what my dream looks like. Huh? <laughs> As always, the summer season comes to an end. The things I've put off all summer long to go kayaking add up, and I have to do some serious adulting to catch back up. The temperatures drop, the melt from a glacier lessens, the river levels dwindle, and I call it an end to another all-time season in Utztal. A lot of people were saying the floods had ruined the valley and it wasn't worth kayaking here anymore. I hope this edit proves them wrong and I hope I see you all out here on the water next year. It's not the end, it's a new era. La la